Hey guys, what's up? Aru. I'm calling it now, Miss Himiko is gonna be the Archon of Natland. But judging from Natland's Archon Quest theme, she may or may not be there anymore. So welcome to another video of me losing all hope for humanity. Today, we're going over characters from Honkai Impact that could be the current God of War in Natland, as well as characters that could be inspiration from Honkai Impact into Genshin Impact. Honestly, I just wanted to talk about some pretty banger characters in the Honkai manga, and I thought it would be nice to show you guys some characters that you otherwise won't know about unless you play Honkai Impact, I guess. Timestamps below, let's get started. Murata is known as the God of War and the Lady of Fire. Now, little is known about Murata specifically, but we can take inspiration from Murata's people who inherit her traits and characteristics. Murata's people, known as Muratans or Children of Murata, are a strong, hardy, proud people with fiery red hair who are said to live in the slopes of volcanoes. They also seem to be easily irritated and are sometimes pretty obnoxious. Long ago, tribes from Natlan would perform rites of combat and celebrate victories in her name. But the Moratan tribes that we know of that have survived are nomads for maybe 1,000 or 2,000 years, between Morata becoming the Pyro Archon and Vanessa's story in the Genshin manga. Based on Vanessa, the only tales or knowledge that their elders could pass down through generations was the art of combat, which is made for survival. One such combat could be the boxing arts, or shadow boxing, that improves one's ability to visualize enemies and preemptively move depending on the the scenario they choose. Today, Natlan is a region of dragons, where quote-unquote war ravages the land like an undying flame, and where they join an endless ring of war. Dragons from Natlan have evolved to a point where a large number of dragons now coexist with humans. Natlan's Archon might also be different now because only two of the seven Archons are original Archons. So with that said, we can start looking at characters from Honkai Impact that could be the Pyro Archon or at least be the inspiration for Natlan's Archon and characters. Starting with the most obvious answer, we have Himiko and her variations within the Honkai series. Himiko is Saint Freya Academy's strong and reliable teacher of the trio protagonists Kiana, Mei, and Bronya. Himiko is a very brave and sometimes reckless fighter in battle that wouldn't bat an eye when it comes to saving her students or keeping others from harm, while also being pretty good at keeping her liquor down. Himiko, in her early years, had an interest in exploration of the stars, which could be why he Himiko is in Star Rail today as the leader of the Express. While studying the stars, he was under different mentors like Einstein, yes, this Einstein, and Welt Yang. Her great combat prowess is the result of hours upon hours of hard work and training. Even though she initially started with absolutely no combat experience before becoming part of Shiksal. Now during her time as a teacher, Himiko was able to suppress Raiden Mei from becoming a Hersher by using quote-unquote God's Bane battle suits that traded more power for one's lifespan. What followed was the events in Honkai Impact 3rd where Himiko fought against Kiana after becoming the Hersher of the Void. This is where Himiko was guided by Fuhua to find the battle suit of Vermilion Night Eclipse which housed the 7th Hersher, Himiko, the Hersher of Fire and from my understanding was her in a previous life. Which then leads us to this cinematic here and there oh. goes Himiko. Honestly, I can kind of see an aesthetic similar to Vermilion Night Eclipse and Blood Rose Himiko. Vermilion Night Eclipse actually wasn't red. It was white and gold and worn by Mei in the previous era. Now if we put this armor side by side with what Vanessa and her fellow Muratans wear and maybe make it fancier with some tribal warrior gear designs, then maybe this is what Natlan's people could wear. Minus the fancy technology and exhaust pipes, of course. A mix of both real-life tribal wear and a splash of fantasy inspirations on top. Think of an armor made of dragon bones and leather or cloth with headpieces using feathers or fur, or even horns. One example is from Fate series' is Quetzalcoatl, who is an Aztec and Mayan god. Paired with Fate Grand Order's representation, Quetzalcoatl's badass combat style is really something to see in-game. Or maybe Black Clover's Mario Leona, which is represented by a lion. And lions mostly live in Africa. 
The Netland character Jansen already displays such pieces of clothing on her person in the Travail teaser, and she's inspired from Yoruba, an African ethnic group. So maybe this is what not only Muratans, but also Natlan people or warriors wore and would use to perform their combat rites. And their Archon Murata, being where they get all their traits from, might also sport the same attire but in a more grand and regal fashion. Blood Rose is kind of a stretch since it's more of a wedding dress than something you would see tribespeople from Natlan wear, but maybe Hoyo can style it in a way that would reflect Nahida's design from Sumeru. Nahida seems to look like she's wearing her Archon garb, similar to Fosalor or maybe Baal. If Morata is indeed a fallen Archon that will be resurrected in the next Archon quest, then maybe she would resurrect wearing her Archon garb 500 years ago. The Blood Rose battle suits also incorporates the loss of HP for more damage as well as Vermilionite Eclipse having the overdrive mechanic, of which you lose basically all of your abilities if you go into overdrive mode. In terms of lore, we can maybe take some hints from her best in slot weapons, God Slayer Surtur and Surtur Muspelverd. We can assume that the Pyro Archon is using a Claymore based on Himiko and her weapon at least. Surtur is the fire giant that is prophesied to destroy Asgard and all the gods, while Muspelheim is the land of fire giants. We know from Skirk and her master, Sir Talogi, which is the Flame of Surtur, and we also know from Nubalet's teaser post that a certain character named Shbalanka was entombed with something called the Primal Fire. So maybe Surtur, Sir Talogi, and Shbalanka's Primal Fire could be these two flames that are linked to the secret that the Pyro Archon will later tell us. Puhua and Himiko's relationship quite literally can't be held down because they've met each other in the previous era, so maybe in Natland they would again meet up as the Dragon Archon duo. Puhua is the stoic, disciplined, and pretty distant class monitor of Saint Freya Academy. From Chapter 20 of Honkai Impact, Puhua was born in the slums of a metropolis in the previous era. After the third Honkai eruption of that era, she met Himiko for the first time, and is also when she joined Fire Moth. Puhua looked up to Himiko during her time in Fire Moth, but Himiko became corrupted and became the seventh her share of fire of that era. Hua was infuriated but remained a member because of her promise to find out why Himiko became a Hersher, as well as the truth about the Honkai. Now, disclaimer, multiple fragmented events were shown throughout the game and the manga regarding Fuwa's backstory, so I'll speed you through some events worth mentioning for the context of this video. Meeting her first friend that looked like Carol Peppers from post-Honkai Odyssey, defeating many other Hershers as well as Emperor-class Honkai beasts at the age of 17, which is terrifying to say the least, ironically becoming a Honkai enhanced soldier known as Mantis despite hating anything related to Honkai corruption, becoming part of the 13 Flame Chasers after the fall of Moth, being the only confirmed Flame Chaser to be subjected to Suara, which was another experiment that basically increases muscle strength, regeneration, and reaction time by 100, as well as surviving until the current era, which is the timeline of Honkai Impact 3rd, where we see her various battle suits as well as her sort of altar, Senti, which was the result of Fuhua getting healed by Otto after getting shot by Otto. Fun story, I know. And finally, getting what seems to be her entire arc in the most recent Chapter 42 and upcoming Chapter 43, reuniting with a fellow flame chaser, Griseo, in the most recent chapter and turning into the upcoming battle suit Fallen Fuhua or Garuda. I've theorized before that Fuhua's combat style being a possible new playstyle that would be introduced to Natlan and possibly Murata's combat style too but with a claymore as her weapon, as well as theorizing that she might either be the flaming bird at Natlan's volcanoes based on the Lava Walker artifact set. But after watching her most recent battlesuit trailer, Feng Huang of Vicissitude, I'm 90% sure that her mechanics, title, and design are going to be part of Natlan and maybe become an inspiration for the current Archon of War. Taking Travail Teaser's theme for Natlan into consideration, Puhua and Himiko might be the Pyro Dragon as well as the Pyro Archons of Natlan's Archon Quest. The name Feng Huang means Phoenix, and phoenixes are immortal birds that cyclically regenerate over time or are born again. So the revival of a fallen Archon through the help of a phoenix's secret to resurrection might be Natlan's main plot, which is interesting 
considering how divine thrones are destroyed. Like if the title of Archon can be destroyed even though a phoenix resurrects itself after. We currently know that 5 out of the 7 Archons have died. So the Pyro Archon would have likely been replaced 500 years ago after the Archon War. And the now current God of War is the one managing Natlan and its human slash dragon community. The combat style of Garo da Fuhua also involves losing HP to inflict a single lethal punch. This style of losing HP was greatly emphasized and mentioned by the devs in her gameplay preview. However, her battlesuit design is leaning a bit more on the Chinese side, obviously since it's a Feng Huang, as well as her other battlesuits being closely designed around early Chinese dynasty clothing. But I'll leave the creation of a Mesoamerican slash African tribal armor design for Fuhua to Hoyo, of which I look forward to if she is going to be part of Natland. Now aside from Himiko and Himiko as inspirations, we also have other notable characters that may be inspired from as Moratans or Natlands. One such character is Shub Nick. Shab Nicholas is part of the Snow Wolf squad of Shixel created to prevent and destroy emperor and above classes of Honkai beasts. The members of this squad include quite a cast of powerful Valkyries led by the S-class Valkyrie Cecilia. Nicholas was part of that squad and fought numerous Honkai beasts until they were destroyed in the second Honkai eruption and awakening the second Hersher, Sirin. I honestly just feel like her character would be a good fit as a Moratan in general. Her title is the Daughter of Chaos and Black Goat of the Woods, which is just awesome. And she's for some reason linked to Cthulhu, not just through name, but as a deity that she knows. The next character could be Agatha. One of the orphans where the Hersher Siren came from, the Babylon Tower, Agatha first fell due to deadly experiments in the search for weapons against the Honkai. She later became the pseudo Hersher of Fire, created by her friend Siren, who became a Hersher. Siren was given something called gems by the will of the Honkai, which then quote unquote revived her. Sadly, Agatha's screen time in the manga was short lived because she was incapacitated by Fuhua, basically making her brain think she's dead while her body was still alive. Agatha was presumed to have been killed by Benares, Sirin, or Fuhua because she was no longer of use as a pseudo Hersher. Funnily enough, Fuhua was the one who made her into a vegetable. So if both Fuhua and Agatha were to be in Genshin, then Agatha would either hate Fuhua for some reason or be outright scared of her. A character that might be Yansen's inspiration is Patricia, who was part of the Valkyrie Snow Wolf squad. Hopefully Hoyo and Natlan in general would have lots of dark skin characters within the region, but if Yansen has a mom or a big sister, then that's something I look forward to seeing. She looks like Yansen and she could be made into a village chief of sorts of one of the tribes of Natlan. The other character is Jackal, who more or less looks like Dea. Maybe she could be part of Dea's real family if you could still remember remember Dea's story quest. Not to mention her story quest itself, Lion's Blood. And most lions only live in Africa. Dea's name could also be taken from the Berber queen, Dia, of which Berber is an ethnic group in North Africa. And her ultimate literally punches her enemies with Pyro too. Lastly, we have Louis, who I honestly think should be a Pyro dragon, or at least a chief. Maybe she's a descendant of Tenak or one of the tribe chiefs from the Talking Stick. She's also the mother of Carol Peppers, who for some reason met with Fuhua from the previous era, as well as being part of the post Honkai Odyssey. So here's to a Dea continuation and possible family reveal, as well as meeting the Chad mommy Louis and her daughter Carol. Next is Susanna, Zofia, and Matila. Honestly, just because they wear what seems like Arabian design clothing, as well as being part of the Foz Jin Valkyrie squad. Foz meaning pure in Greek, and Jin being, well, jinns in Arabian and Muslim mythology. So these pure jinns could be made to connect Sumeru's jinn race, as well as lead the travelers through the Great Red Sand and into Natlan. They could also be connected with Nilu and her career as a dancer and follower of the Goddess of Flowers. Along with the flame chaser Pardophilus, we could have a squad of dancers that follow the Goddess of Flowers that also know about Natlan. 
Next is Eden and Aponia because I love their characters. And because using Eden instead of Himiko would be the biggest troll that Hoyo could do. Next is Ryusuke Murata who is Himiko's father. I don't really know where to place him in the game apart from being another Muratan character or being the village chief of one of the tribes in Natlan. But he could also be Shbalanka or maybe one of the dragons in Natlan too. So that's it, every character within Honkai Impact that may or may not be the Pyro Archon, as well as some possible Natlan characters along the way. Comment below, is Natlan going to have flying mounts or will we be able to swim in lava? If you enjoyed the video or watched until this point, you might as well leave a like and subscribe as well as hit the bell to stay updated on my channel. Honestly, I can't stop talking about Natlan because it's my favorite element. So yeah, Pyro Simp, Himiko and Fuhua Simp and Dea simp as well. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video, yeah? Like on if you enjoyed, subscribe and hit the bell for more of my ramblings and stay mad theorists. Bye!